In the 1920s, new technology was popping up all over the place in the form of electrical appliances and audio and visual entertainment. The main customer of these labor-saving devices were middle-class families who had electricity in their homes, which was about 35% of the United States in 1920. The washing machine, the refrigerator, the radio, the television, and the telephone were all either created or greatly improved upon in the 1920s. The costs of these machines were usually on the higher side and not available to the lower class families who usually brought in an average of $100 each month. Not only did technology reduce the amount of labor in households, but it also created a huge amount of jobs in new factories. Before the washing machine was invented, buckets of water had to be hauled from wells and then the wet clothes had to be wrung out by hand. When the electric washing machine came out in the late 1920s, it was basically a metal tube that you filled with soapy water that spun when you plugged it in. The cost of these machines could range anywhere from $60 to $200. The machines sometimes came with attached ringers made from rubber that made it easier and more efficient to dry clothes after they came out of the wash. In 1925, General Motors came out with the first Frigidaire Electric, which was one of the first refrigerators. The invention of the electric refrigerator kept food fresh for much longer periods of time. The need for frequently shopping or having stores deliver was cut down by a huge amount since the food wasn't going bad as quickly. The cost of these could also reach up to $300. Now, both the washing machine and the refrigerator are household appliances that are in just about every single house in the country. Another piece of household technology that exists in almost every home today is the telephone. In 1923, telephone operators were starting to be replaced by automatic panel switching machines that were used with dial phones. The first of the dial phones was made up of two pieces, the transmitter and the receiver. But in 1926, the two pieces were combined into one handset. By 1929, long-distance circuits reached many major cities on the eastern half of the country, including New York, Chicago, Miami, Dallas, and Atlanta. Telephones had come a very far away since the 1920s, along with the radios and television. Radios used to be the size of a dresser and could be cost upwards of $120 in 1926, which is equal to around $1,500 today. After purchasing the radio itself, you would then have to purchase an antenna, a speaker, and a battery with a charger. The antenna would have to be installed on your roof if you wanted to get any kind of decent reception. The radio itself either had to be listened to using a speaker or a pair of headphones that also had to be purchased separately. To get power to the radio, you either had a battery eliminator that could plug right into the wall or a large battery that could be charged. Back then, radios weren't used for listening to music or talk shows. They were used to listen to the news, and eventually, they were used to listen to live sporting events. Television started off as a way for pictures to be sent over the phone, and by 1927, people could see someone's face live as they talked over the phone. The television we know today was first created in 1928, when the Federal Radio Commission issued the first television station license. The first television was just a tiny box with a hole that wasn't much larger than a quarter and was invented in 1924. It wasn't until 1929, however, when the first TV studio was opened, even though it had very low quality of images. Now we know televisions as large screens that you can watch anything from the news to movies on, and most families have at least one television in their home. Technology in the 1920s created a large amount of jobs for unskilled workers and women, reduced labor-intensive housework, made it easier and faster to communicate with people, allowed pictures and videos to be viewed at home for the first time, and made it easier to find out about the news. The 1920s was a huge milestone for appliances, entertainment, communication, and technology. The invention of the airplane affected both the United States and the entire world for the better. The airplane was not first built in the 1920s. It was built by the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, who had their first manned flight on December 17, 1903. The first airplanes were designed as biplane gliders that were flown, as, flown like kites. 
For the next three years, up to December 1917, they continued to redesign until they had their product for their first flight. Airplanes were also used in World War I as fighter and bomb planes. When World War I ended in 1918, there was an excess amount of planes from the war. So the pilots with planes had nothing to do with the planes. The government realized that airplanes could be used to transfer mail from place to place, which they called airmail. The government began to give out airmail contracts to pilots, and the first U.S. Post Office airmail service was established going from New York to San Francisco with stops in major cities along the way. This was important in the United States because it decreased the time in receiving mail and allowed people to know what was happening from the world in a shorter amount of time. The problem early on, however, was that 31 of the first 40 airmail pilots crashed and died. The first of the airplane industry was a young man named Charles Lindbergh, who was the first to make a nonstop solo trip across the Atlantic. He was 25 years old when he took on the $25,000 prize challenge in 1927. He flew from New York to Paris on a plane called the Spirit of St. Louis. He was treated as a hero when he arrived in Paris, and even more when he came back to the U.S. He was not the first to attempt the feat. He was the seventh aviator to attempt the flight, while the other six died trying. When people saw what Charles Lindbergh did, people developed a love for airplanes. So pilots began to fly at fairs and aviation shows for the people's entertainment and to gain celebrity status, along with the money that fair directors paid them. Airplane pilots also sought fame in setting records for flying airplanes, just like Lindbergh had. All planes were not solo, however. By 1925, airplane, private airplanes were being formed to carry both passengers and mail. One of the major plane designers was Igor Sikorsky, an immigrant from the Soviet Union. He developed a 14-passenger plane that was made of metal instead of the standard wood. William Boeing produced a more durable plane in 1925 and became the largest airplane manufacturer in the world. In 1929, the airplane industry had grown to a $200 million industry. Early on, when planes were able to transport passengers, airplanes were mainly used for transportation by the rich. And the only people involved with airplanes was the government, private airliners, fairs, and entertainment centers, and the pilots flying the planes. Airplanes influenced both America and the world and showed that we are all interconnected and that the world is not as big as we had thought. Show people that Europe is only 33 and a half hours away from us instead of days and days away, which is how long it would take on a boat. It also interconnected the country, like the train had, and changed people's views on how far one major city to another shortened, also like the train had as well. In the 1920s, people were mesmerized by how much airplanes and flying technology had grown. People were able to send relatives from far away letters and hear back from them many times faster than they had before. Airplane, airmail revolutionized communication just like the telephone, which was continuing to be developed throughout the 1920s. In the history of the US, airplanes created heroes like Lindbergh and proved to people that flying was not just possible, but it could transform the way people socialize with others. Airplanes affected the wars the United States had fought in and would fight in after the 1920s, including both World War I and World War II, as they would continue to develop planes for warfare and have the optimal advantage. Because of airline technology, more technology was needed to be developed to make aviation easier, safer, and more comfortable. Some of this technology included airports, others than, other than just open fields, runways, and traffic controls to help pilots navigate the sky. Today, airplanes are one of the most common forms of transportation and are to this day used as a form of transportation for both people and mail. People are able to travel all over the world because of airplanes, and airplanes have turned into a sport as well. In 1896, the automobile was created for several different reasons, but the main reason was to transport people mm -hmm. over longer distances quicker. However, the automobile really took off and expanded in the 1920s. Henry Ford was debatably the most recognized name in the automobile industry, and it all started when he invented the Model T. When Ford's Model T came onto the market, the public went crazy, and a new era of transportation was ushered into effect. The original price for the car was around $825, but in 
but that dropped down to $325 after eight years on the market. Ford is not the only car manufacturer in the 1920s, even though he was the most recognized. Other companies like Rolls-Royce, Mercedes-Benz, Bentley, and more were also around the 1920s, but their cars were more expensive than Ford's cars were at the time. The main design of the first automobiles were essentially a metal frame with four wheels on it and a small motor that was not very powerful. A lot of modern ideas that are being used today were also being used in the 1920s. The idea of a heater built inside the car for driver comfort was introduced during the 1920s. The majority of cars built in the 1920s were convertibles, but towards the late 1920s, that started to change. Manufacturers started to think about electric power cars, hybrid fueled cars, and more. These ideas are still being used and advanced today, even though people were thinking about them during the 1920s. Other ideas included producing cars that could use four-wheel drive and front-wheel drive. The car allowed people who worked in the city to live in the suburbs because there was now a way to get their jobs without walking. Due to the ability to live away from work, suburbs started to develop around major cities. Since more and more people were now driving and owning cars, the streets had to, had to be changed from dirt to concrete in order to allow a smoother and easier ride. Along these new roads, businesses started to pop up like gas stations, diners, hotels, and stores. The design of cities also had to change in many ways to accommodate the automobiles. In some places, the roads had to be widened so several cars could fit on the road at one time. Cities also started to become more and more congested due to the overwhelming amount of traffic on the streets, the loud sounds of car engines and horns, and cars par parking along just about every sidewalk you could find. The invention of the automobile boosted the economy greatly thanks to new businesses and the popularity of the automobile. The world started to become increasingly more alive and spread out with the automobile and has been like that ever since its invention. In the time of the Roaring Twenties, technology, automobiles, and airplanes all changed in a major way and we are still being affected by them today. Technology like the phone and radio allowed us to communicate with each other and hear about things quicker. The car allowed us to live further away from cities and our jobs, and the airplane allowed us to send mail to relatives quicker and travel to other countries and states in a fraction of the time. Due to these new items, roads were created, a huge amount of new buildings were popping up, new businesses were emerging, and our lives were becoming easier and more efficient.